Brother, the thought I'm going to be sharing with you is how God orchestrated the events surrounding Christ's death. Now to some, the events leading up to the death of Christ may have seemed coincidental to some, or things that maybe could have been avoided or prevented. However, to those who are saved, we know that the things that happened to Christ were caused by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. And as we read about the death of Christ, we see the will of God being carried out and executed. Yeah. Everything that happened to Christ, this was of the Lord. It was not of man that it should be credited to them. And the first thought I'm going to start out with is the scriptures are clear that it was God who gave his son to be crucified for the sins of man. This is not something man gets credit for. It's something God gets credit for. God gave his son. God sent his son to die for sins. And until it was God's appointed time where that death should take place, men couldn't do much to Jesus. There was a time when Christ couldn't be touched by those who sought to harm him. Yeah. Like Christ, when he spoke in the synagogue, this is in Luke chapter 4, he, he spoke in the synagogue and people became so furious that they thrust him out of the city. They took him to a brow of a hill to throw him down headlong. However, the Spirit confirms that this was not determined to come to pass as it reveals Christ just passed through the midst of him and went on his way. The will of man has been frustrated. It wasn't time yet. Yeah. So men were restrained and held back. In John chapter 7 verse 30 and also later in chapter 8 verse 20, the Spirit says that no man laid hands on him for his time had not yet come. Again, the will of man was frustrated. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to take him. But they couldn't touch him. There were times when men wanted to do, several occasions, men wanted to hurt or kill Jesus, but their attempts were, so, were frustrated and not accomplished due to the Lord's keeping hand. Christ was to die for the sins of the world, but God determined this to be carried out a particular way. It was not up to man to decide when Christ would die. This was something the Lord determined would happen. It would only take place when, he, when the time he appointed came to pass. So it should be clear that men could not start the process until God permitted it. But then there's a flip side to that. If men couldn't begin the process of their own will, what about stopping the process once it started? There were men who wanted to kill Christ but couldn't. However, there were also men who sought to save Christ but couldn't. Peter made them this determination to stop Christ from being taken and crucified. He said he told them how he's going to be taken from men and suffer and be crucified and rise the third day. And Peter said, that's not going to happen. Absolutely not. And it was like, that was a determination to prevent something. Mm -hmm. But Christ's response was, get thee behind me, Satan. And what is Satan? A liar from the beginning. The fact that it came from Satan, that was his way of saying, not true. Not true, Peter. This is not true. This, he, this rebuke came as a result of trying to stop something God determined to happen. Later, tried, Peter tried to keep Christ from being taken by means of a sword, managed to cut off somebody's ear. But the Lord refuses Peter's help. Put the sword away, he says. He says, I'm more than capable of calling down 12 legions of angels if I wanted to. This is not a big fight for me. I'm letting them do this. And then he even ends, Matthew 26, 54, he ends with that question, how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled if you stop this from happening? Again, in those two cases, the will of man was frustrated. In this case, it was preventing what the Lord was to happen. Now you can see there, there's times where before the time came, men were being held back. Not yet. Yeah. Not, nope. That's the hand of God. But then you, there was a certain point where it was to come to pass, and men were being held back, except it was, yes, let it happen. Don't intervene. This was God orchestrating the event. This is ultimately, I think, illustrated here in John chapter 19 when Jesus stands before Pilate. I'll read this account. This is in John 19 and I'll be reading verses 9 through 12. And speaking of Pilate, he went again to the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate saith unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? And Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto you hath the greater sin. And from henceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. 
So he sees Bot before Pilot. And Pilot speaks, but he doesn't like the silence. So he he makes known the power that he has to Christ. He says, "Don't you know that I have power to crucify? I have power to release." He's like, "Don't you know who I am? I can kill you, and I can I can set you free. I can make it all go away, Jesus." But we see this is not the case, as Jesus makes known. You wouldn't have power at all had it not been given you to do so. See, he's making known this, this purpose of God, that God's working behind the scenes here, that it was time for him to die for mankind's sins, and it was for that reason he was even standing before Pilate. He's like, Something's, something, God's working here. That's what Pilate didn't see. However, the will of man will once again be frustrated, as it says in the next verse. From that point on, Pilate sought to release him. Pilate made a very good effort to reverse this sentence of death the Jews were demanding upon Christ. He starts with you say, so he'll sit, he's like, well, he hasn't committed any crime. He's an authoritative figure. People in that position are used to being listened to. They have the final say. He's innocent. He hasn't committed a crime. He's harmless. But they still persisted. Now, in some cases, that doesn't make sense. Why would you want someone innocent of a crime to be killed? But they, as they persisted, he has them punished. He has them scourged. Perhaps if he just gets punished, maybe not killed, but punished, maybe that'll be enough. All right, there, I brutalized him. I've hurt him. Is that enough? No, it's not. Kill him, they say. And then he comes up with another plan. He says, that, all right, I can, I can release a prisoner. So I'm going to have Jesus, and I'm going to put him against the worst out there. Barabbas, a murderous brute man, like a beast. Surely people won't choose this man over Jesus. I imagine that was kind of his thinking. It's like, let's see, I can't lose this one. No way they'll pick him. They have to pick the one. Jesus promoted, love your enemies. He was harmless. Do good to all men. Like, that's, that's the kind of message Jesus preached. Preach a murderer over that? Well, <laughs> again, they pick Barabbas. And, Je and Jesus is sentenced to death once again. again. And Pilate has to eventually just give up and wash his hands. He's like, do what you want to him. <laughs> My hands are clean. Just do what you want. He delivers them into his hands. The will of man has been frustrated. An absurd effort was made to reverse something God had determined. And it didn't work. Didn't work. Even men in high authority couldn't reverse this thing that God was working out in our salvation. Christ was eventually crucified. He did die for our sins. And as Christ put it before he died, it is finished. The work that God, that God had, been brought, had brought to pass and salvation was made available to all men. Now what I wanted to draw from this is that salvation is truly of the Lord in every sense. What happened to Christ was no accident. And if nothing else, these records confirm that God's purpose gets carried out in the end and men have no say in it. Men wanted to kill Christ at times, but couldn't. Other times, men wanted to save Christ, but couldn't. But in the end, the death of Christ is always something we remember as a work of God. Amen. So may we always remember, recognize this as we give our thoughts and our time to this. As this is the Lord's doing. Amen. Amen. Dearly Father, we pray as we partake... At this time, we pray, Lord, that you, we would honor your Son with our thoughts and our conduct. We pray, Lord, that we would not cease to remember what your Son has done for us, and we would not cease to remember the things that we have through this provision you've made by your Son. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen.